Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is a part of operating systems video course. Today's topic is services in operating systems. OS services. An operating system provides an environment for the execution of programs. It provides certain services to programs and to the users of those programs. These operating system services are provided for the convenience of the programmer to make the programming task easier. Operating system services provide following functions. First, user interface. Second, program execution. Third, file system manipulation. Fourth, IO operation. Fifth, communication. Sixth, error detection. Seventh, resource allocation. Eighth, accounting. Ninth, protection and security. User interface. Almost all operating systems have a user interface. This interface can take several forms. CLI, which is command line interface, batch interface, and GUI, which is graphical user interface. CLI, command line interface. Command line interface uses text commands and a method for entering them. See a keyboard for typing in commands in a specific format with specific options. Batch interface. Another is a batch interface in which commands are entered into files and those files are executed like shell scripting. GUI Graphical User Interface Most commonly used is a graphical user interface. Here the interface is a window with a pointing device to direct I.O. Choose from menus and make selections and a keyboard to enter text. Program Execution the system must be able to load a program into memory and to run that program. The program must be able to end its execution either normally or abnormally, indicating error. I.O. Operations A running program may require I.O. which may involve a file or an I.O. device. For specific devices, special functions may be desired such as recording to a CD or DVD drive. For efficiency and protection, users usually cannot control I.O. devices directly. Therefore, the operating system must provide a means to do I.O. File System Manipulation Programs need to read and write files and directories. They also need to create and delete them by name, search for a given file, and list file information. Finally, some operating systems include permission management, to allow or deny access to files or directories based on file ownership. Communications There are many circumstances in which one process needs to exchange information with another process. Such information may occur between processes that are executing on the same computer or between processes that are executing on different computers tied together by a computer network. Communication may be implemented via shared memory or message passing. Error detection. The operating system needs to be detecting and correcting errors constantly. Errors may occur in the CPU and memory hardware, in I.O. devices and in the user program such as arithmetic overflow or an attempt to access an illegal memory location. For each type of error, the operating system should take the appropriate action to ensure correct and consistent computing. Sometimes OS has no choice but to halt the system. At other times, it might terminate the process to return an error code to a process to detect and possible correct. Resource Allocation When there are multiple users or multiple jobs running at the same time, resources must be allocated to each of them. The operating system manages many different types of resources. Some may have special allocation code, whereas others may have much more general request and release code. There may also be routines to allocate printers, USB storage drives, and other peripheral devices. Accounting We want to keep track of which users use how much and what kind of computer resources. This record keeping may be used for accounting so that users can be billed or simply for accumulating usage statistics. Protection and security. 
the owners of information stored in multi-user or networked computer system may want to control use of that information. Protection involves ensuring that all access to system resources is controlled. Security of the system from outsiders is also important. Such security starts with requiring each user to authenticate himself or herself to the system, usually by means of password to gain access to the system resources. If a system is to be protected and secure, precautions must be instituted throughout it. A chain is as strong as its weakest link. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please do comment. Do not forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates. Thank you.